All right, this video is going to be about dimensional analysis. So what we're talking about here is converting from one unit to another. And if you've had me for previous classes, I refer to these as T-charts. So it's a quick review. Let's say you've got 35.7 inches and you need to change it into centimeters. You need some kind of equivalent statement or you might call it a conversion factor. Something that you might have to look up or might be given to you. For example, one inch is 2.54 centimeters. So here we know what the question is. How many centimeters are in 35.7 inches? And we know a conversion factor. We know that one inch is 2.54 centimeters. So, now we will make the t-chart, which is what dimensional analysis is all about. So, to convert, make this little chart. The upper left box is where you put what you know, what you've been given. So, here it's 35.7, and you must put the unit inches. Now, as far as your conversion factor, you know that 1 inch is 2.54 centimeters. So, I have to put one inch on the bottom, and then above it, I put 2.54 centimeters. You might be wondering, why did one inch go on the bottom? Why didn't I put one inch on the top? Well, it has to be on the bottom because my inches have to cancel. And if one is on the top, it's like being in the numerator. The one on the bottom is the denominator. They cancel out, like in math class. That leaves me with centimeters as the remaining unit. So my answer is going to be in centimeters, which is good. That's what I expected. And now I need to do the calculation. Now the way to calculate the way to calculate with dimensional analysis is to multiply all the numbers across the top and divide by any numbers on the bottom. So here we have 35.7 times 2.54 and there's a 1 on the bottom so I can say divide by 1 but we know dividing by 1 is kind of pointless but I would just do it here to demonstrate. And I get 90.678. To follow significant figure rules here, the original number has three sig figs, so my answer is going to have three. I will round it to 90.7 centimeters. That's called a one-step dimensional analysis problem. It starts with what you know, and then here you have the equivalent statement, otherwise known as the conversion factor. Something on top equals what's on the bottom. 2.54 centimeters was 1 inch. Let's do one that's a little bit more advanced. If something is 8.7 feet, that's equal to some number of centimeters. I'm going to give you two equivalent statements. 1 inch is 2.54 centimeters and 12 inches is one foot. So it's going to be a little bit more advanced than the first chart. It's going to have two steps. So the first part of the chart is what I know. 8.7 feet. Now since there's feet here, you have to have a unit of feet down here. So going over here to my conversion factors, my equivalent statements, one foot is 12 inches. So one foot, or one feet, one foot, is 12 inches. Notice how this works. What's on top, 12 inches, equals what's on the bottom, one foot. The feet here cancel. I'm not done though. Because the way it is right now, I've converted from feet to inches. I want to convert all the way to centimeters. So I need another step. Since inches is up here, I need inches down here. And according to my other statement, 1 inch is 2.54 centimeters. So I write 1 inch, 2.54 centimeters. Notice here, inches cancel and centimeters is left, which is what I wanted because I want my answer to be in centimeters. Now multiply the numbers across the top. 8.7 times 12 times 2.54. I won't bother dividing by 1 
I'm dividing by one again, we don't need to. I get 265.176. And in this case, what we can write, we should really only have two sig figs. So I'm going to write 2.7 times 10 to the second power. Now you might ask, how did I get from having 265.176 to 2.7 times 2 to times 10 to the second power? Well, because there are only two significant figures here in 8.7, my answer can only have two significant figures. So instead of a 2, 6, and 5, I can only have the 2 and the 7. See, where the 7 came from is I rounded the 6 up because you know, 65 rounds up to 70. So it became 2.7. And I have to multiply by 10 to the second power so that the decimal point moves over twice. So you could also write this as 2, 7, 0. It means the same thing. Centimeters. If you remember significant figure rules, if there's a 0 here with no decimal point, you don't count the 0 as a sig fig. It's just the 2 and the 7. Sig fig is, by the way, in case you forgot, it's an abbreviation for significant figures. So either one of these answers would technically be acceptable. Next, we're going to do an even more advanced problem. Let's take 18.2 miles per hour MPH and convert it into meters per second. Now, this is a problem you might run into when doing physics because real world situations, especially in the United States, can be in miles per hour, but meters per second is the SI system, the system in which you'll do a lot of your math calculations in physics. So, you may need to do a conversion like this. I need a couple, um, couple of equivalent statements. For example, I know that one mile is 5,280 feet. I know that one meter equals 3.28 feet. Uh, let's see, one hour is 60 minutes. And one minute is 60 seconds. Notice mile, I spelled out M-I-L-E. You could also write M-I. Meter is just M, so be careful not to confuse mile and meter. Now here's where things get more complicated. It's going to be a long chart. I start out with 18.2. Up here I put miles. Now remember, it was miles per hour. That's like saying miles divided by hour. So when I make my t-chart, I don't just use the upper left box. I do use it, but I don't just use it. I put 18.2 miles up here, and down below I write HR for hour. This is 18.2 miles per hour. You could think of it as being per one hour if you wanted to, but often the one isn't shown. Now I've got some work ahead of me. I have to convert 18.2 miles per hour into meters per second. So let's just start using some of these equivalent statements. Since miles is up here, I need to have miles down below. And it says that one mile is 5,280 feet. So one mile, 5,280 feet. Notice how I make sure to write down my units. So miles cancel. Next, since feet is here, I have to have feet down here. Over here, I know that 3.28 feet is one meter. Small m means meter. Feet cancel. I've successfully now converted from miles to meters, which is good because that's the goal, to go from miles to meters. I need to convert now from hours into seconds. Because notice, miles per hour is supposed to turn into meters per second. 
So notice I have not done anything at all to cancel out my hours here yet. It's time for me to start dealing with that. Since hours appears down here in the denominator, up here I need to write an HR for hour. One of my equivalent statements here is that one hour is 60 minutes. Let's use that. One hour is 60 minutes. Now these hours have canceled. Keep going. Since minutes is down here, minutes has to be up here so that the minutes cancel. Check the equivalent statements. One minute is 60 seconds. So one here, 60 seconds down here. Now notice everything has canceled out except that meter and that seconds. That means my answer is going to be in units of meters per second. I just have to do the math. All right, when doing the math, bring my calculator down here. I multiply everything on top. So 18.2 times 52.80 times 1 times 1 times 1. All right, I'll type all that in, even though we know we don't have to type in the times 1s. Now, divided by 1 mile here. Here's where students get, get tricked sometimes. Because 3.28 is on the bottom, you have to press divide again, 3.28. Because 60 is on the bottom here, divide by 60. Because your next 60 is also on the bottom of your t-chart, divide by 60 again. Basically, because these are on the bottom of a t-chart, it means they're in the denominator. So you're dividing by them. Press enter, I get 8.138. Now, that needs to be rounded. And my original number had three significant figures, so this needs to have three. I write 8.14 meters per second, and I'm done. So we've converted from 18.2 miles per hour to 8.14 meters per second. And this is the kind of thing you may have to do at the beginning of a physics problem to convert from miles per hour to meters per second before you can continue on and solve the problem. So that is a quick summary of dimensional analysis. You've seen three different problems here. A simple one, we call this a one-step problem, even though it looks like there's two parts to the t-chart, since this is just the original number, it's just considered to be one step. Here you saw a two-step using two equivalent statements or conversion factors, depending on which term you want to use for them. And then here we've seen a multiple step that began with miles per hour, so you had the hour down in the bottom in the denominator. And this one ended up being multiple steps to get our answer. So that concludes the video review of dimensional analysis.